All right, today I'm going to show you something I have been nudging around with for a while, and um, it's all about uh, making a nice and easy dimming. Uh, and in my entire house, I use binding. Uh, I use Zigbee to MQTT, and I use binding so the Zigbee switches go direct, talks directly to the Zigbee bulbs, and that makes uh, the build uses the built-in uh, dimming. <clears throat> so that's really smooth. Uh, but now I have a couple of uh, switches um, that uh, that are not Zigbee, uh, so they are using ESP uh, Home, and therefore they just go directly via ESP Home into Home Assistant <clears throat> and therefore from there into Node-RED. So what I ran into is how do I make a smooth uh, dimming experience using uh, that. So the first thing I did was uh, uh, make a, a flow in Node-RED with uh, timers, uh, waiting and, and and doing several impulses and that kind of stuff, and that is very chunky. So you have to find the right amount, uh, the right timing, so the right uh, port or sleep between all the events. Uh, and what I came up with uh, was um, this flow. So you see here, and so this is my switch, and uh, I found this. Uh, Note that you can from the contrib and you can install it. And all it does is it takes an input and then an, uh, I can define uh, what command starts in and what command ends the dimming. And then I can set some kind of delay. So for every 200 milliseconds, it steps, it takes a steps of five and it starts with zero and goes to 255, which is the maximum brightness. On the bulbs, and it, it automatically, if I then release the button and press again, then it goes uh, the other way. Um, so, but the problem here, I think, is that if I try to do that, keep an eye on this. This is the value it outputs. Keep an eye on, on how that uh, behaves. So, when I press the button, we can see it actually jumps a bit. So now it goes down, and now we turn the light up. And what you can experience is that it has to send a lot of uh, commands, and here it starts with chunks a bit. And when I go down again, it's, so it has to send a lot of commands on my uh, to Home Assistant and from Node-RED to Home Assistant, and then further on to MQTT, and then to the Zigbee network. And that causes some delays. So uh, you get some, eh, I don't know if you can see the light on the camera, I could actually uh, do like this, then you can maybe see the light go up and down, now it dims lights, it gets dark, and the camera compensates for that, yes. So, what you can see in the number, it chunks sometimes, so it's not a very fluent dimming experience. So I was like, since the bulbs can do it um, by talking directly to them, for instance, I have a key uh, bulbs and also a key uh, uh, on and off switch. And since the um, the bulbs can do it out themselves, they must have some kind of dimming uh, built in. <clears throat> and that got me thinking. So if we look at the specifications on, on the bulbs, and there's actually something here that's worth, worth mentioning. So we could do a SIGBG MQTT, uh, MQTT broker message addressing the bulb, and then we can set, and then we can actually set, there's a command called brightness move. And this is quite interesting. So the brightness step increases the brightness by a step. But the, the move step a command is actually quite interesting because it starts... Um, dimming uh, at a certain speed that I can set here. So this is 40 units per second. Uh, so that's actually quite interesting. And if I send this brightness move zero command, I can actually stop that dimming. 
So the first thing I did was to jump into the command line of the MQTT broker in Home Assistant and entered my lamps and then I told uh, I entered the brightness move 40 and if I click send I don't know if you can see it on the camera but the light actually turns up very nicely and if I enter a negative value I can actually turn the it just fades and it keeps uh, dimming until it reaches the bulb's lowest point. So the is interesting thing is that if I do this and press send and then change this value to zero and press send again, then I actually can stop the dimming. So this should be able to work in node red. Uh, this would give me a perfectly fine smooth dimming curve not any chunking and if uh, home assistant is or the or my Raspberry Pi is busy then it will be even more chunky on the dimming this will be really really smooth dimming because this the dimming is done in the bulb so every, all I do is I send an MQTC message to the bulb telling it to dim or turn up the light with this certain speed and then I send a new message when I want it to stop and this is actually exactly how the IKEA switches does it um, so this is actually how the IKEA switch does the dimming when it talks directly to the bulb so um, in order to do that let's switch to CB to MQTT uh, and uh, so this is my try I'm going to switch so you can actually see the switch I have this is a nice uh, ESP32 switch that fits in the Danish um, wall uh, boxes, wall cans. I don't know what it's called. Um, yeah, I have some other videos about that. You can watch that uh, on YouTube too. So, so the idea here is that if I press this one, I, I still use this um, chunky dimming thing. You can see how the messages just shoot and shoot and shoot over here. So my my thought was that I wanted to. So here I have created I have a, a trigger so I can fire, uh, and I have a MQTT message telling it to turn up. So I have my uh, topic, and I have set my brightness, and the speed is 70 units per second. Uh, so now I can actually press this, and then the lights turns up to fully, and I can turn it down and I can stop it so now we are, I actually have the commands I need so all I need to do is insert that into home assistant I can just go like that so this is just a subflow I've made for for the button uh, or for the switch here so all it has to do is it has a long press end and a long press begin and then I have um, a press that just marks if you put, tap one single or double or triple. There's also another video about this uh, subflow um, <clears throat> on my YouTube channel. So right now uh, I can actually toggle this and toggle the light. <clears throat> and if I long press, it will fire this, which corresponds to either up or down. And I have a I use a flow variable to define if it's up or down. So I just store it within this uh, within this panel uh, flow, and then it changes the direction. It flips the direction. So if the direction is up, then it sets it to down, and then it's so next time it will hit uh, go down here instead. So that's pretty simple. So if I press the button keep it in then it goes down and if I hold it in again then it goes up so this actually works really well and as you see there's, it's so smooth because whatever I have so when I send the <clears throat> long press begin I actually instruct the bulb to start uh, dim in either up or down uh, it, with the given pace and when I release it again I instruct the bulb to stop uh, dimming so I'm not sending multiple messages over my Zigbee to a PTT network. That also spares a bit. You know, if I if I use the other 
um, way that I showed you before, I'll just be spamming my Zigbee network. And if I have like 15 switches around the house doing this, that net Zigbee network will be very, very busy. Um, <clears throat> and that will definitely lead to losing packages. So this is a way better solution where I only send a start packet, uh, a start message and an end message. So start dimming and stop dimming. So that works really, really well, I think. And of course I can single tap it and, and go for, for this one and then just toggle the lights. I also choose, choose I could have done this <clears throat> using a, a call service uh, node from to Home Assistant. Uh, but since I'm using direct MQTT messages here, I want to do the same because, of course, it makes completely sense to grab this and wrap that into a subflow. So right now, all I have to do is, right, because I have different messages, I could also set my subflow up to accepting messages, but I don't want them to be tied, uh, high up, tied so hard together. So right now my subflow here, let me give you an example, just accepts either, uh, because subflows only can have one input, I would actually have preferred to have three, three different inputs for each of these, but we can do that. So because I can have only one input, then I just put a switch here where I can say dim, stop, or uh, Everything else will just toggle the light. Right, so the dim goes to this one that changes the direction for each time and stop, just stops the dimming, and anything else will just toggle the light. So basically, this does the same. I have another button assigned to it. So I can short press the chocolate and I can hold it in order for it to, to smoothly dim up and down. If I keep it all the way down, it will go to the lowest level. And if I keep it turning the light up, it will go to the two, brightness 255. So this is actually a very cool way to do a smooth dimming uh, and avoid all this chunky um, all this chunky, uh, you can see, uh, here it is, it's chunky dimming. As soon as your home assistant gets a bit busy, it this you can see it gets very chunky. It has to send a lot of messages on your Zigbee network. So it's a way better solution to, uh, to use the built-in dimming in the bulbs and uh, via MQTT. So that was just a, a, a fun little thing I did today. I really hope that uh, that you liked it and that you can use it. And of course, I will uh, see if I can export this uh, subflow and put a link to it in the description so you can pick it up from GIST. This was Espen Montek. See you later.